Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Shifts and Pucks News Pack for Saturday, August the 6th. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Shifts and Pucks, Facebook.com Shifts and Pucks, YouTube.com Shifts and Pucks, Twitch.com Shifts and Pucks. Subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network. As, of course, we part, apologies, we missed yesterday. Had something come up, but uh, we're back today, and there's a bit of things uh, coming up here. So uh, we'll get into this here as the world juniors 2.0 of course starts on tuesday and the ivan and uh we also got the hyvin olinka to talk about jonathan huberdo as well and we but we'll start here uh of course in the face of world juniors 2.0 and the off season or the summer of questions towards hockey canada the hockey canada board of director chair of the hockey canada's board director michael brindamore uh, has resigned effective immediately. This is from Rick Westhead's uh, Twitter uh, this morning. Uh, do you ho- Hockey Canada's Michael Brindamore is stepping down as chair of its board's directors effective immediately. Hockey Canada says its board will meet in the coming days to determine the next steps to appoint an interim chair. The next board election is scheduled to occur at the annual meeting in November 20, 2022. That is when the uh, findings around the governance of Hockey Canada is expected to be released. Uh, There is an investigation involving that as well, by the way, that was announced this week, in case you missed that. Uh, And uh, and so we've got, uh, of course, uh, Thomas Cromwell, the Honorable Thomas Crow- Cromwell, has agreed to lead the governance of the, the review of the organization. So that is coming. That's also coming up. Uh, and then Hockey Canada clarifies that besides quitting his chair, Brindamore is no longer a member of the HDC's board, which, of course, if you remember, Sheldon Kennedy uh, a couple weeks ago uh, called for the resignation of Scott Smith. He called for a resignation of the board. Um, and Block MP Sebastian Lemire renews those calls uh, to for the executives and the entire board to be removed. Now, one thing we did not talk about was there was a meeting to have Smith step down. The board of directors were called. Brenda Moore called it. And that was defeated. So um, this is the down the maybe a downfall of that uh and but in a statement uh today brendan said i have listened carefully and intently to the comments of canadians about the culture of our sport and our and our organization and about our actions and leadership i understand that the action we have taken in recent weeks are part of the solution uh, Brenda Moore continued, I am reassured that the Honorable Thomas Cromwell CC has agreed to lead a governance review of our organization that will help us make the changes that are needed. I am confident the recommendations will guide the organization into uh, the future of desired change. Uh, now, another thing that happened yesterday is 13 regional hockey federations in Canada, 13 regional hockey federations, announced they are threatening to withhold their due payments to Hockey Canada uh in result of the mishandling of the sexual allegations in 2018. so we had so we go through this all we had the calling of the we've had the government question we had sheldon kennedy uh call for the the stepping down and resignation of the leadership of the hockey canada uh we've had the women's hockey team canadian women's hockey team ask for a place at the table and now of course um, the regional hockey federations have now stepped in and are asking questions as well. So this is a uh, a pretty significant thing. Uh, the letter was sent on Thursday. It was led by Hockey Quebec. Uh, and so that is what is going on. Of course, we still have sponsors like Jai, TELUS, Canadian Tire, among others that have paused their sponsorships to Hockey Canada. Um, so he is uh so brenda moore is out and we'll be having ian kennedy on next week for a podcast so we're gonna be, be 
deep into these issues with Ian Kennedy. Of course, he covered this. He's been covering this with the Hockey News. You've been seeing him on Twitter, Twitter, Ian Kennedy CK. Uh, follow what he's been saying. He's been very passionate about this issue. So I uh, think that this will be an interesting conversation. And the next question he really here is, is we've got the step that we've got the removals, which is great, but what is the next step? And I think that's one of the things that we'll talk about with Hockey Canada there uh, going on there. Now, uh, the Ivan Holinka tournament wraps up today as we have the bronze medal game going on and then we have the gold medal game so the gold bronze here it will be finland and czechia the czechs the swedes beat the czechs last night six to two and then canada beat finland four to one uh scott ratzlaff by the way seattle thunderbirds goaltender was been on a was on a pretty good roll they've allowed two, canada's allowed two goals uh, in this entire tournament. And uh, so this will be interesting to see. So Canada, Finland, that will be at uh, four o'clock or Canada, Sweden, four o'clock mountain, Finland checks should be, will start at noon. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. Jonathan Huberto spoke to the media yesterday, the Calgary media after his eight year extension uh, and really what, some of the things that he, he said here, uh, about the media, just in terms of, of, it was a lot to do with, uh, why he signed is the effort that Flames general manager, Brad Treleven made heading over to Montreal. Um, and, uh, you know, he said that, you know, that connection, that dinner went really well, uh. And he's uh, he says he's in for the next nine because of course the contract kicks in next year and he's excited to work work with Brad. Um, and Tree Living then spoke as well. Um, so Tree Living said, "I heard there was a lot of talk about the dinner. I don't think it's a big deal. It was a player we traded for who I'd never met. I just thought it was important to get out there and sit across the table and get to know him. Uh, so eight years, eighty four million dollars." Um, and that is, uh, but I think the big thing with Huberto is, is getting, you know, the fact that tree living and he can downplay this all he wants. The fact that he went to Montreal, he could have done a zoom meeting. He could have done a email. He went right to it. Um, and again, I think this is just says this again about the off season that Brad tree living had. This is probably one of his best off seasons he has ever had as Calgary Flames general manager. So that is what uh that's the there what's going on still waiting of course um indications are close not official that Mackenzie Weger is eager to sign in Calgary nothing is close on that front yet or nothing has been announced we'll keep you informed on that as well uh and of course a couple of other things that happened yesterday uh Yakov Trennan was an order to two, awarded a two-year contract in arbitration yesterday, $3.4 million, 1.7 annual hit. Uh, he's had 17 goals, 24 points in 80 games with Nashville last year, uh, and he will be a UFA in uh, 2024, tied with Matt Touchane with goal, three goals on the playoffs. So Jakob Trennan. Awarded two years, 1.7. Sonny Milano, that has been a name that a lot of people have been wondering about. Uh, some of in Calgary have been wondering about him. Uh, other teams have been wondering about him as well. Um, and, uh, and, of course, he, he has been, of course, linked with uh the uh with a, a few teams of course and of course he's been part of the Trevor Zegers lacrosse goals uh um lots of teams still out there nothing official in terms of a signing yet I, I thought I saw something on Twitter that he was signed but that has not been made official so that's the other part here as well uh, and then, so that is pretty, and then Keegan Colasar um, agrees with a deal with the uh, Golden Knights, 
1.4 million annual, a career high 24 points last season. Uh, he was supposed to use a re, re RFA arbitration hearing was scheduled for next Wednesday, seven goals, 17 assists and 77 games for the golden Knights. So, um, of course he's a third round pick of the Columbus blue jackets in the 2015 NHL drop the 69th pick. So that is the news for today. You can of course, follow us all individually on Twitter, Sean beardy, good zero three Tyler T N O B L E. Devin Gordhow09, Chris Schneids, S C H N A I D Z, as we'll be talking Monday about the Flames and what they have been doing. And of course, we'll be talking about the Canucks and what hasn't happened. And I'm curious with our conversation, although there hasn't been a lot of, we haven't particularly criticized the Canucks that much about their offseason. I mean, they've made a few moves. But they still haven't made that that move, that that stamp on your team, Patrick Alvin, new general manager move. And is it is is when is patience becoming something else? Um, what has this offseason really been like? Uh, well, I think we're going to dig into that a little bit from the Vancouver Canucks perspective as well. Uh, so join us Monday uh, for that. And we'll, of course, you can catch us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, subscribe wherever you get your audio, as well as on the Area 51 Sports Network. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll talk to you all very soon. Bye for now.